sometimes you can come into a place where, uh, you know, we, we, we get caught up in numbers. But generosity, it's not a number. And you can, you can, you can never uh, out-generous somebody. You know what I mean? Like, in other words, uh, God, looks at the, God looks at the heart in your giving. And so I think it's just always important to remember when you're being generous to the Lord, when you're being generous, remember that, you know, because he's looking at that. Amen. Hey, we're going to jump into uh, week two of a, a series that we started last week. Really, it's been, uh, to me, pretty methodical uh, coming into this year about just having a house in order. It was a word for, uh, to, to, to my heart uh, just as, as being an under-shepherd in this house. Um, it's just that, that our house would be in order, that it would have the flow of heaven. How many of you know when things are in order, things can flow, right? Uh, there, when things come into order, there's an unlocking. When you, you can have all the right numbers on a combination lock, but if you don't hit the right one first, you're still locked up. Order matters, right? And so, um, uh, so really just we were talking about, and, I'm, and I know I'm, I'm going back to a Wednesday night right at the beginning of the year all the way into there's no plan B, you know? Um, God, you know, so many times we live our lives and we say, God, just bless this. And the Lord's like, no, I called you to this, right? And so because there is no plan B, God, God can't bless the issue. It's not his plan, and um, and so and we then the week we talked about uh, so because there is no plan B, let's uh, plan plan A. Let's begin to look with the eyes of our heart again, and and I think about the eyes of the heart. Uh, they're enlightened. There's a hope when you and I look with the uh, with the eyes of our heart upon what God has said. And so we begin to imagine, and, and it creates steps and pictures, and, and our imaginations actually pull us to action. You know, this is why Jesus even put, had to set before him, uh, you and me, for the joy set before him. He had, there was an endurance, and there was a strength, and there was a stepping forth. And then last week, we, um, and so we, we kind of transitioned from that into the house in order uh, this week, but really all of it ties together. And we started talking about, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And we, we were talking about submit or submission and how the, it's so important that we get this, this, this word and not have the context that uh, <clears throat> so many times words carry uh, maybe a history because of how they were interpreted before or maybe uh, what we, you know, when somebody used the word authority, all we could think of is that teacher that took that ruler and would whack the desk or, you know, whatever it might be. There's just those things. But anything that is contended with, you know, words, there must be some truth in because the enemy doesn't fight over what has no value. And so we were talking about submission uh, and authority is really what we're going to get to today. But talking about submission, we talk, we'll look at James chapter 4. Let's jump there real quick. James chapter 4, 6 and 7. James 4, 6 and 7. It says that he gives grace, gives grace generously, as the scripture said. God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. He's talking about order right here. He's talking about how we order ourselves. So he said, if you want grace, if you want to receive God's portion, if you want to receive God's strength, he said, submit to God, resist the devil, and he'll flee, right? This is what this is talking about. This is talking about finding or appropriating grace. We're, we're a lot of times you hear about grace in this day and age, about the grace of God, the grace of God, the grace of God. The grace of God is, is so necessary. It is, we are saved uh, not... Um, by grace through faith, right? It's by grace through faith. But you have to appropriate grace. You cannot have grace unless you come under what God says. You can go to Romans chapter 10, 9 and 10. That unless you can believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, Jesus says, Lord, you can't, if, unless you do that, you can't be saved. There, there is no other name by which men can be saved except for the name of Jesus Christ. And so to appropriate grace, you, the way that we appropriate grace, which is his power, his empowerment for this day and age, which we need, we need. how many of you know the Bible says when sin abounds, grace abounds that much more. So, so right now in a time where there's absolutely a plethora of, of, of that which is contrary to what God says, there's also a, there's a bounding of grace to you and me if you and I will not in a sense, just pattern our lives after the world, but pattern our lives after the word. So let's pattern our lives after the word. This is what we're, so why? So that grace can flow. So that God, so that, and there's something so cool about grace flowing. I think about the children of Israel, and not the, just the children of Israel, but all of the other towns around, all of the other uh, uh, nationalities, uh, nations, they knew that Israel had a God. They, they recognized God's grace, if you will, upon that people about how he fought for them. How many of you want God to fight for you? 
How many of you know to get God to fight for you, you need to be on his team? I love that story where Joshua comes out and he sees this angel and he said, are you on my side or are you on their side? And he said, I'm on neither. I'm on the Lord's side. You better get yourself on his side. So that grace can flow, so that God can fight for you. you want, we want God to fight for us, but the, the key for God, to God fighting for us is for you and me to get on his team. So we said this last week that, that if I come under God, I, I come over Satan. But if I don't come under God, then what, I, I come under Satan. So many times we, and we mention this, like we have this Neapolitan idea, like that there's like, uh, um, you know, I can have God's way, my way, or the devil's way. That, that's false. He says, I set before you, see this all through the word, two choices. God's way, life, hot. He said lukewarm, so that you would know. I'll spew you out of my mouth so that you would know that you're cold. You're wretched. So that means you're not, filled, you're not clothed in glory. Good, good to know. Good to read. Good to listen to. And submit ourselves under. So, uh, and I think, um, and so anyway, we talked about submission. He said, so submit. Um, and I just wanted to talk about that word again. Uh, and last week, I, I actually said that that word was used only five times. That word is not used only five times. I actually listened to my message again um, this last, uh, the, actually this morning. Uh, I listened to it on two times fast. Anybody ever do that? I listened to everything two times fast. Um, <clears throat> on any, I just, I just like, you know, going. I think people talk too slow. You know, I think you got to talk fast, right? Um, so when I talk fast and it's like, I'm like, this is just about right. You know, like Goldilocks and the three bears. Anyway, um, it, and so this morning, I don't know why I got on that, but uh, so what are we talking about? Oh, yeah. So five times. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for listening. Just check. That was the test. <clears throat> But I had mentioned five times, and I'm like, oh, no, 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 that wasn't the one that was mentioned five times. It's actually the word uh, that's talking about where there is um, chaos, right, where there's, uh, where there's strife or, there, or, or there's chaos, and he's talking about anarchy. Everything you see, anyway, we looked at that how, um, last week about how there's anarchy, that word, or we, we, the word that is confusion, where there's confusion is the word anarchy. And it's only used five times. Every time you see that when there's this contention against what God says and you say, there's, it's actually anarchy. But anyway, so this word, submit, is used more. I just wanted to clarify that from, from last week. Anyway, so submission. So submit means, uh, again, under mission. The word submit uh, defined as this, to place or rank or arrange under. So you place or rank or arrange yourself under God. When I don't do that, I'm placing or ranking or arranging myself under or in agreement with the adversary and so we talked about this you can't um you can't resist what you've yielded to again god over me put satan under me and so um there is a rank in god's army and there is a rank in satan's army and whether we know it or not uh, i'm just going to declare it to you this morning that we are in a battle Ephesians 4, uh, 6, 12 talks about we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers, of, of <clears throat> against mighty powers in the dark world, against evil spirits in heavenly places. Really, he's talking about just different levels, different levels of authority. We, we hit on that last week. I'm not going to take a lot, of time, a lot of time there this morning. But it's so important that we get, we get that, that we are under authority now, or that there is a war going on now. So many times, and I want to go back to James, and I want to, because um, <clears throat> we're teaching uh, to get somewhere, ultimately talking about authority, but sometimes um, we'll take a passage to make a point, and, we'll, and that passage in itself could, could um, stand on its own to make the point. And, uh, and that's in James 4, and I wanted to jump down to verse uh, 13 and 14, James 4, 13 and 14. And the reason why we don't, we don't really recognize submitting to God and, uh, you know, resisting the devil and he'll flee uh, is because we don't always see the devil in our lives. You know, like we're pretty good. Like we can do what we want to do and everything's cool, right? And what happens is, is we, uh, we, we the, the mercy of God and his patience with us, um, we're, we're actually self-deceived. 
We're actually self-deceived. It says this. It says, look, look here, you who say, today or tomorrow, we're going to... This is just pride speaking. Okay? So, but when I, when I walk in pride, I'm actually opposing... The Bible says, God resists the proud. Because didn't we just jump to that right before? James 4, 6. He resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Here's what the proud say. Okay? And I, and I, I want to I hit on this a little bit this morning because I think every person here fits into this including myself. At, at one time or another, we, we make our plans, we do our, we, we think that, we just think, oh, you know, okay, he, he says this, today or tomorrow we're going to a certain town and we'll stay there. Look, who, who do you say? And we're going to do business there, we're going to make a profit, we're, we, we make all of our plans, okay? Next verse. And he says, how do you know what your life tomorrow will be like? How do you know that what tomorrow is going to hold? Like, we have this idea that we just know. We just know, we know what's right, we know what's wrong, we know what we're going to do tomorrow, we know, we know, we know, we know, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, we're going to do that, and I'm doing this, and I'm doing that, and I'm doing this, and I'm doing that. Never, ever asking. Until we need help. With Ishmael. Right? Can you see this here? But God resists the proud. He, he, he opposes, but he gives grace to the humble. Part of, part of submitting to God, it goes back to that word submission. To submit means that I'm on a mission that's from God. I'm on a mission from the Lord. You remember the scripture? We're not going to go there this morning, but who of you, after being enlisted, right, in, in an army, engages himself in civilian things? Oh, this is a radical army of the Lord talk, but we're going to have to get this a little bit back as the church. Because if we're going to walk in authority over sickness, over disease, over we're going to have to be under authority. Why, why do I think that I, that I can exercise authority and not come under it? That's impossible. That's deceit. And that's why my prayers or your prayers or the church's prayers are often so powerless. Because we are under no power. The word of God is not a command. It's a suggestion. And so, or so we read it. If I want to be exercise power, I'm going to have to come under power. Go back and please put that the verse back up. Again, James chapter 4, uh, verse 14. And he says that, uh, who, who have you th- said, and said you ought to say, if the Lord wills. Your life is like a fog uh, it's here a little while, then it's gone. If you'll, um, I don't think any NLT uh, on this morning, but it, just NIV or I think uh, KJV. But it, you maybe have read it before like this. Your life is a vapor. It's a mist. It's here today and gone tomorrow. It's, it, it, that's how it is. It, it's, it's like, how do you know what your life will be like tomorrow? Let me read it out of this translation. It says this. Um, no, I don't, I don't have it on in my notes here, but it just says, that who are, how, how today or tomorrow, like, why do you think that you can make the, I'm going to go in such and such a city, and I'm make this plan, you don't know if your life will be required of you, you don't know, so we plan our lives like they're just like forever, when, when they're just but a mist and a vapor, and what I do here and now determines my tomorrow and my forever. I just want to bring this back to eternal-minded this morning, all right? Um, Let's see here. Let's go to Isaiah 31. I mentioned this this morning. Woe to them, and this is really in line with uh, trusting in yourself and saying, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. And this is how we make our plans and trust in ourselves is when we have big chariots, when we have big bank accounts, when we uh, got the corner job or when we, you know what I'm saying, we make, this is how we trust and we make plans based upon our own strength. But he says, woe, the, he's talking to the, really the children of Israel. And really in this time, you could put this in, in this day and age, talking to Israel, when God's going to come down and fight with a sword that's not a, 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 a metal sword, more like the word of his mouth, right? But um, here, here's what he says. He says, woe to them that go down to Egypt for help. Woe to them who, who stay on horses and trust in chariots because they are many. 
and in horsemen because they are so very strong. But they look not unto the Holy One of Israel, neither seek the Lord. It's kind of the same, that same picture of just saying, I'm going to do what I want to do. And, and this is where money tells us what to do so often. And if you go back to Matthew chapter 6, it says this, you can either serve God or you can serve mammon. You're going to either be, you're going to be love one uh, and, and serve one and, and devoted to one and hate the other. Like that's actually what it, it doesn't say you're going to you're going to actually despise actually that word is despise not hate the other. And when it, when we think about the word despise is we just think so many times that money can do more for me than what God can. God just can't quite do it. He doesn't do it work on my timetable. Because my timetable is not eternity, it's vapor. And because it's vapor, I'm trying to get all of me all of me done in this in this moment, all of what I want done in this moment. And when I'm trying to get all of me in this moment, I have no perspective of eternity and the words of God don't hold the weight that they should in my life. Guys, we got to make a switch to eternally minded, eternal minded. And then that also changes my conversation and, and, and realizing that God has planned for me. I'm part of God's plan here on the earth. But let me say it this way. So are you. Uh, so are they. So this is what we're getting to is so we're going to get to the they. The ones that are next to you, the ones that are next to me, the ones that I serve under, the ones that I serve over. Did you know that that's what uh, government what was, what was meant to be, to serve the people? I know we've kind of twisted, it's gotten twisted and deranged, even like being a doctor, it was to serve and to love people, not just, you know, that's what it was. You remember Little House on the Prairie, you know, got the little black bag, house calls late at night in the storm. There was about just service, genuine love and service and value. All right, so let's go to, <clears throat> so let's go to this, uh, Matthew chapter 8, 9 through 11, and, and <clears throat> talking about, um, oh, just talking about authority. This is the story of the centurion. It's a, um, Matthew chapter 8, 9 through 11. This is the story of the centurion who is under authority. And because he's under authority, he understands faith. So we're talking about this morning that your faith and my faith would not just be a form without the power. This is where, where, where our children, they need more than a form without power. Guys, this starts with mom and dad, house in order. Our, our children, our, our families, our cousins, our aunts, our uncles, our moms, our dads, our grandmas, our coworkers need more than just a form without or denying its power. And so part of having power is having faith that works, faith that is active, faith that, that, that there's an authority in which you speak. There's an authority because you come under and now you agree with what God says, then heaven's backing you. Here on earth as it is in heaven. Why? Because I too am under. Then you can pray this way. The, the, the word of God, when he tells you to go into all the world and preach the gospel, that wasn't for a select few. That was for you and me. This is important. And I'm talking, this is to every, every person here, that, including myself, about you and I yielding to the Lord and coming under his authority so that authority can come and, and be, uh, in a sense, um, uh, on our behalf, or there will be power on our behalf. Okay? So, there we go. For I myself am under authority with soldiers under me. I tell this one go, and he goes, and that one come, and he comes. And I say to my servant, do this, and he does that. And again, this is the passage of the centurion who has a servant who's sick, and he finds Jesus. And he said, now, next verse, if you'll just say the word, because this is what I know. And when Jesus heard this, he was amazed and said to those following him, Truly I tell you, I have not found anyone in Israel uh, with such great faith. Verse 11. I say unto you that many will come from the east and west and will take their places at the feast with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob uh, in the kingdom of heaven. Many are going to come by just receiving a word. This is what he's talking about. Many are, many are going to come by just receiving a word. How hard is it for you and I to receive God's word? This is what ultimately coming under authority is. Am I willing to receive God's word? We talked about this and made this statement. Faith isn't so much about you and me trying to believe as much as it is you and I willing to come under a word, willing to hear. He that has ears to hear, let him hear. Okay. So we're talking again this morning about am I under authority? Because this is heaven's flow. 
That's the title of this morning's message, Heaven's Flow. Heaven's Flow is under authority. This man tapped Heaven's Flow because of understanding authority. This man right here, the centurion, understanding Heaven's Flow. He tapped Heaven's Flow because he understood authority. <clears throat> so let's, let's go here. Um, you know, again, uh, talking, uh, talking about uh, authority and uh, talking about God's authority and talking about all authority. We're going to get there here this morning. Um, again, we talked about this uh, just a moment ago, about how you're here um, because you're part of God's plan, but so are they. So God put you here, but God also put them here. Let me say this this way. Order requires others. Order requires others. We don't only work with God, we work with men. So this is big for the plan of God, and this is what the centurion understood. He didn't just understand that he was under Caesar. Because a lot of us would just say, well, I just report to the president. But what about reporting to the governor? Or the, you know, like, like, what about reporting to the one that's here? Because all of us would be like, yeah, I, I, I know him. How many of you ever name dropped? Come on, be honest. You're like, oh, yeah, I know him. Right? You know somebody that knows somebody, or you met him one time, you don't know him. But you know, you're trying to uh, maybe be included in a conversation, or, and you're trying to say, oh yeah, yeah, that guy, yeah. Oh yeah, I met him, or whatever. You, we, 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 want to, we want so many times to be known, or to, to report to the, that one. Like right there. I, I can, you might say it this way, well, I, 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 could, I, I could serve... Anyway, I'm not going to get off on, on, on trying to make another analogy. You understand. All right. <laughs> again, again, order requires others. We don't only work with God, we work with men. So God put you here, but God also put them here. So I wonder if you were to look to your left or your right, you might not really have your boss here. Well, you do. <laughs> but, but, but you know what I'm saying. Like most people don't have, you're sitting in church, you're not sitting next to your boss. Like you're just sitting next to a peer, right, where everything's cool. Because like most people sit next to people they like and they agree with and they don't have to be told what to do. This is why a lot of times parents and kids, even in church, don't want, they want to sit next to because they want to be out on their own. You know, and we want them to get out on their own. No, I don't mean that. That's where we're training our children to transfer their dependence. Absolutely. Um, but you, you, so many times, even in church, we don't recognize. But like, let's think of this. I want you to just imagine right now about rank, just ranks. Somebody here is, is, is over you in, in the Lord. There, did you know there's elders as the way God sees it in the church? They have rank. And the Bible talks about respecting and honor those. You know, what does that look like? You know, I, I, these are things that I just want to just let set in this morning. That the people that you're next to are here because God, it was part of God's plan. And part of God's plan, he set people, and, and there's a flow. There's a heaven's flow. Not, not that one's more important than the other. It's just how it works. It's just how it works. And unless we can understand that, unless we get that, that other people here are required to bring about God's plan... And my love, we talked about this last week, about how he said in the Old Testament, these are house rules or ground rules before going in. Love the Lord your God with all your strength and love your neighbor as yourself. Can I tell you that people aren't going to know him because our love for one another is jeopardized continually because we don't understand authority? Can I tell you that so many times love, love and uh, the, the key to walking in love is truly understanding authority? To walking in love is understanding authority. In other words, that, that, that number one, who said walk in love? You know, I love authority because the Lord, uh, authority helps me do, to do. I love authority. You ought to say I love authority because authority helps me to do. It's amazing how when, uh, as a kid, you know, if mom and dad are, are, are standing there or sitting there at the kitchen table and you have your trash that you would normally just throw in the trash can and it would hit the wall and bounce off and onto the floor, right? But because mom and dad are there, you, if that happens, you go over there and pick it up and put it back. Authority helps you to do. It's amazing how when the police officer is right there at the intersection, there's not a California stop. It's full stop. 
It helps you to do. Authority actually helps you to do. This is it's so it's actually vital for your and my being walking in faith. Walking and having active faith. You know, there's, the Bible talks about faith that doesn't have corresponding action is dead. Can I tell you that having authority in your my life and having spiritual authority helps me to do? So that when the word of God comes from a, a, a general or a commander or whatever, and they speak and I receive it as one that is in authority, it actually helps me to do and make an adjustment in my life to walk in agreement with what God said so that I can experience his goodness. But we come, we, we come to, to church or we come to, uh, to the internet or to wherever, and so much of the church in this day and age, let's just go back and remember that in, 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 as the time comes closer to the end, he said men will heap to themselves whoever they want to hear because they have itching ears, and they will not submit to sound doctrine. Yeah. But instead, listen to only what they want to hear. Can I tell you we're in that time and in that day and in that age? Anybody know what I'm talking about? Ah, I don't like, I don't know about that. Uh, I don't know about that. Uh, I don't know about that. Because I don't, I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that. The reality is we probably shouldn't be listening to a hundred other voices. We don't want to hear this, but do we, where, should I, where should I be feeding, Lord? Where are you directing me? Because those people that God has given authority over me so that heaven could flow into me and through me. Every voice is not for me. Like, let's just think about this in the army. If I'm a pilot, okay, and I'm listening, and I'm, I'm supposed to be listening to this direction, but I'm listening to the tank driver? Like the tank driver? Like the general that is handling the tank drivers. And I'm taking my, well, I want you, what I want you to do is I want you to come along the ground here, you know, and it's like, wait a minute, I thought, oh, okay. Uh, you, I'm getting mis, miscommunication. And, and when I have miscommunication, uh, where there's not clear communication, there's no application. And then I know, and because there's no application, then I'm not a doer of the word. And so I'm not making any adjustments in my life. And, and the faith that I claim is dead. And so there's actually no power at all in what I say I believe because all I am doing is listening to something that makes me feel good all the time. I want to listen to something that encourages me. I want to listen to something for hope. I want to listen to something for depression. I want to listen. Can I tell you that a lot of depression would be solved if you just listened to and put to work the pastor's word in your life? Your, let me say it this way. Your general or your, your admiral or whatever you want to, or you know, you, a captain? Okay, okay, lieutenant, like that way where we would put to work and, and that we should all, all authorities from God. We're going to get to this here in a moment. That I, there would be a move because I'm not looking to every other word. There's a clear order. All right, now we're going to meet here at this time. At this time, there there's just a clarity that comes because I'm not on every other voice. Because you'll find that when... when <laughs> If you're the tank driver and you kind of catch channels and you turn channels to the, man, we're always down here in the dust. I want to fly in the clouds. Oh, yeah, me too. Why don't you see how that works with that tank? Oh, you're trained for that. That's not how, I'm just talking about how did God set you, what has he called you to where has he called you under? What has he called you to lift up? What has he called you to partner with? What has he called you to honor? Uh, let's, let's go here. Moses, uh, let's go to Exodus 16, 8. And, uh, <clears throat> Again, just re, re, recounting the, um, the centurion. If, if God's word doesn't have authority over me, I cannot walk in authority when I'm in a battle. If God's word doesn't have authority over me, I cannot walk in that authority when I'm in a battle. A newsflash, we're in a battle. So don't, don't call upon, you, all you're going to be calling upon, it. you're going to be calling, and, which is, is great, is his mercy. It's great. But the Bible says the just are to live by faith. So there's a, there's a move. You'll find that as, 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 as you're a baby Christian, have you ever noticed this? That as a baby Christian, it's like you'll see like just really quick things sometimes. You're like, God. Oh. You know, here I am, this, you know, dad, and somebody's given them all that. You know, I'm a, I'm a dad in the faith, right? And all the, these new kids are getting free 
this and this, and just like God's moving for them. The mercy of God is just at work. They don't know how it all works. But as you mature, you have to apply the word. So apply the word and, and become a doer of the word. So anyway, uh, let's go back to Exodus chapter 16. And this is where um, the children of Israel are murmuring and complaining, which is pretty common. Can I tell you the children of Israel, this is just an example to us, and this is often where we are at a lot. Uh, Moses also said, uh, you will know that it was the Lord when he gives you meat to eat. They're complaining about not having anything to eat. You let us out here to die. Um, he said, you'll know it is the Lord when he gave you meat to eat in the evening and all the bread you want to eat in the morning. Because he has heard your grumbling against him. Who are we? Who are we? You are not. Who are we? You're not grumbling against us, but against the Lord. Now, I, I mentioned that earlier this morning, that so many times... God takes things personal when you're talking to somebody else. You remember Paul on the road to Damascus? Or Saul at the time? Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? He didn't say, why are you persecuting the Christians? He said he took it personal. When you got a cold drink for a young one, who did you do it for? When you visited somebody in prison, the Lord associated them with me because it's Every person here, you're part of God's plan. So this is, he takes it very personal because that's who I chose to sit there. So now that you're complaining against Moses and Aaron, children of God, he said, you're not, you're not complaining against Moses and Aaron. You think you're complaining against Moses and Aaron. You're actually complaining against me. And we a lot of times don't want to hear this, but if we believe that, that when we are grafted in and we come under the lordship of Jesus Christ, that we are bought and we are grafted in to the body of Christ and he sets pieces in the body as he sees fit. When I complain about where I'm set, I'm actually complaining not against a pastor, not against a person, not against a co-worker or a fellow, fellow lieutenant, or I'm complaining against him. It's a, and when I do that, I hinder where God's wanting to take me. God, so many flat times that we could go a lot further and a lot faster if we just got things in order. And so, so many times the delay is not on God's side, it's on our side of order. All right. So you see that. Again, I love this verse, 1 Samuel 2.30. It says, those who honor me, I will honor, and those who lightly esteem me, he said, will be lightly esteemed. You, we... How, how am I honoring the Lord? Well, let me say it this way. How am I honoring you? How am I honoring you? How am I honoring the people? And again, you understand that when God puts somebody over somebody, it is to serve them. Moses was there to serve the people. This is why they always called on him at every waking hour of the night. He kind of got tired of the people coming to complain with him. Coming, like he was, this is how God, this is what authority is. It's to serve the people. When you look at Ephesians chapter 4, when he sets gifts in the body to equip, to serve the people, so that you'd be equipped for the works of ministry. Pastor, teacher, prophet, evangelist, apostle. What are those for? To serve. To serve, to equip. And, and so many times what we've had is we have this wrong uh, idea of authority because of what, the, way, the way that it's been um, twisted or manipulated in, in this day and age. But and because of that, we oppose authority instead of coming under what God would, would want in his design and, and allow it to flow and even our prayers for authority. We re, anybody here maybe have been known to resist authority? I mean, I've, I've listened in an election year, which we're in, to the church resist authority. Resist, and you're saying, well, we're not supposed to stand for something? Absolutely. But you're supposed to stand, it says in 1 Timothy, to, to pray for all those people and those in authority that you could. Part of the reason that God allows people to come to office is so that you would mourn. The Bible talks about in Proverbs, it says, when, when the righteous rule, people rejoice. But when the wicked rule, guess what people do? They mourn. 
They put on some sackcloth and ashes and they begin to pray again because all of a sudden the land with the, where it was easy and great and whatever, it's not, and they for, had forgotten the Lord their God and now they're coming back. So it, the only reason the wicked ever are even allowed to rule is because the righteous have sat on their haunches or have been, had their head in the sand. So you wonder, well, it's not God's plan. It kind of is God's plan because y'all are asleep. Church, this is the wake up. So it's actually the mercy of God that a wicked person would rule. You're like, no way, that, that's crazy. That, like, uh, well, wake up. Like, we're going to pray for the righteous. We're going to pray for those in authority on the election year. When, when really there's, there's people that should be stewarding their life, recognizing that God has called me to stand and to increase and to rule in that sphere of influence. In, 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 in politics. We're to be training in schools. Well, they, there's rules in schools. I can't say this. There's rules in pulpits too nowadays. Like at what point are you going to like say what God says or are you going to uh, like, like we're going to have to stand for something. That's the only time that you see in Scripture, in the New Testament, where he said, the Lord said this, who am I to, you know, when he was talking about, be quiet, be quiet, don't preach the gospel anymore. He said, no, I'm going to honor you, but I'm going to preach. Should I listen to God or should I listen to man on this piece? Okay, let's keep going. So, 1 Samuel 2.30, those who honor me, I will honor. I don't know if I even made sense on there, but somebody got something there. Um, that kind of moved off there. Matthew 10, 40 through, uh, 42, it says, He who receives me, I love this, again, I will honor those who honor me, how God so looks at people and he takes it personal. And you know, part of receiving what heaven sent, right here. Like, did you know that heaven could be right there next to you? But that's just little Joe. That's just, that's just that person that's really frustrating. You know, but did you know they're assigned and they're part of God's plan here on the earth? Did you know heaven could be in them for you, but because I don't receive them as heaven sent, I hinder heaven's flow? He says this, he says, anyone who welcomes, uh, welcome, anyone who welcomes you welcomes me. And anyone who welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. It's pretty powerful, like welcoming Jesus. If you welcome, like you're welcoming Jesus. When you welcome, when they welcome you, you're actually, like you have Jesus at your disposal. This sounds like authority, doesn't it? It sounds like a flow. It sounds like if, if I'm sent by God, when you receive me, you receive Jesus, you receive God. So all of that is at your disposal. This is, and he goes on to say, whoever welcomes a prophet, this is the, the exact same statement, but just said a different way, whoever welcomes a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. In other words, if you see and you say that's a prophet of God, that's the one that's sent to speak the word of God, guess what you're going to receive? A word from God. Uh, I, I, was talking, I, had, I was talking probably three different times in the, in the last little bit, um, in the last two weeks. I was in a conversation with different individuals. <clears throat> it happened three times. And we had um, Brother Marty Blackwelder here at the beginning of the year. And for us, and we've made this statement many times, as we really believe he just acts as one that carries the word of the Lord to this house. Have you heard that before? Yeah. Okay. And so he'll come a day early and just come and pray and just say, Lord, what are you saying? Not that I'm going to give a prophecy every time, but just, hey, here's an on-time word. And, uh, and I, 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 there's three different individuals that t- talk to me about saying, well, he was here, and so we, knew, we just knew we were going to hear a word from the Lord. And so guess what they heard? That's right. But you can sit in the same seat every Sunday in the place that God sets you to hear a word and miss it every time because you don't hear it. And so the answer that you and I need, God sent. It was heaven sent, but it was just missed. It was missed because of how we received it. It was missed because of how I received it. Like, who's talking to me? Lord, are you talking to me? Oh, that's just, he's just saying that because of that. Like, who's talking? Where did God set me? God, where did God set me? This is why when we, we, the Bible teaches very clearly that he sets people. 
And he says, blessed is he that's planted in the house of the Lord. Planted. Not, tra- not, not, not like in a container, but planted. He said that he's not going to see when the heat comes. He's going to be by a river. He's going to be flourishing. He's going to be able to give shade. He's going to be able to give fruit. He's going to be able to be, be a blessing to many, many people. Glory to God. That's his plan. And it's not about this, um, this power trip. It's understanding authority in, in that which is is serving. But you know what? Submitting to authority means oftentimes I won't agree. I don't know about you, but like when, when, when we looked last week at, at look, when Joshua said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. He said, why don't you consider if serving the Lord seems agreeable to you? Or if it said you think of it as being hard or burdensome or annoying? He said, make a decision, but as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Did you know that the only reason uh, that he had to bring that up is because God's words oftentimes for us will be hard, but we're going to have to make a decision. That's hard, but that's right. That's hard. That's hard. Forgive. You don't know, I, but you said, that's hard, but that's right. Thank you for the love of God that's in me. That it's about a choice of will, not my strength. That, thank you, Lord, that greater is he. That, that's hard, but that's right. When he talks about g- giving, that, that's hard, but, but that's right. And what will happen is there will be a transition to where no longer, if you can make it, if you can make it, you can transition to joy in forgiving. You can actually transition to joy in forgiving. You can transition to joy in giving. You can transition into joy in whatever you see the word of God and it comes to you and you go, oof, that hurts so good. It's like, oh, you pastor was just stomping and twisting. Oh, thank you. There's something about that good sore, you know, because I know I'm going to look in the mirror and there's something, as much as you hate that next day trying to get into the you're like, I did it. I'm working. It's working. And you button those pants up and you, whew, thank you, Lord. It's working. God's working in me. So whoever receives a prophet in the name of prophet receives a prophet's reward. <clears throat> I love this. Um, again, talking about possessing the land. The Old Testament. Talk, it's written for our example. In Deuteronomy chapter 1, 13 through 15. This was part of before going into the land. Choose for yourself wise, understanding, and respected men from each of your tribes. And I will appoint them as your leaders. And you answered and said to me, uh, what you propose to do is good. Like this, the setting people over 50, so he took leaders, tribes, wise, respected men, appointed them as leaders over you, as commanders of thousands, hundreds, fifties, and tens, and as officers for your tribes. Did you know that that's even still how our military runs? Authority. Mission. Submission. There's no mission unless there is authority. You you will not accomplish any, because where does communication come from? Where does the assimilation start? Where does it happen? If everyone has a megaphone, then who's talking? Because no longer can they be in agreement. This is like what, every, what, what God did is he came down and confused their language. All, what you heard is just a whole bunch of people talking, but nobody listening. That's what happened. At the Tower of Babel, he said, uh, let me confuse their language. Everyone was still talking, but now nobody was listening. And so nothing could be done. So part of bringing about the plan of God here on this earth is truly in bringing about his mission. And every church assembly is assembled to do something in the community. This is the strength of a local church. Is to, there, there's an assignment on a local church that is not just out of a creative, like, oh, well, that pastor has great vision. No, it's what is God wanting to do here? What is God wanting to do there? And, and what am I to contribute there? And this is where all of a sudden there's just like, wow, God set, sent them and he sent me and he sent we 
Okay, Lord, show, let me get in line here. How, how can I use my gift to serve? Oh, Father. And part of he, he, even this morning, and as we were giving tithes and offerings and, and thanking the Lord, he, there was a, a word to in, open up your expectation in, and expect for more. That was a word, and you could miss it, and you could just not do that, yeah. and you would be out of line. Yeah. Yeah. You'd be out of line, yeah. and you'd be affecting the whole. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, no, it's that serious. Out of line, I'm not, I'm not increasing my expectation to expect more, to believe bigger, to get God involved. So, and you're out of line. Anarchy is actually what this is with the Lord. Okay? So now let's keep going here. Um, so you, they, they appointed leaders. So that was key to possessing the land. Appointing leaders was key to possessing the land. You know, it was interesting, um, real recently, um, and I, I'm just kind of talking candid here this morning, uh, just, if this is, I'm really enjoying this morning, personally, um, <clears throat> even though I have sweaty pits, right? Um, I still get that nervous feel, like playing basketball, you know, like I, I remember playing in college and playing in high school. I don't care if you practice and you're playing a team that is at 500, right? You still have that those butterflies, and I think that's a righteous thing. I think it's a right thing. Um, but anyway, just talking about um, uh, part of the key to possessing the promised land was appointing leaders. And you'll find that in this passage, this is talking about how from those tribes they appointed, and then they also sent people into the land from the 12 tribes, and you have Joshua and Caleb were the two that came. Okay, But part of the key to possessing the land was having leaders. And... Um, and just recently in here uh, at, the, at, this, at this church, um, the Lord had been dealing with my heart um, probably for the last year and a half uh, about uh, establishing leadership in this church. Um, not just a leadership that's just a staff or, um, or just even the board, of a, a board, which we are you know, under, but just a more hands-on uh, in, in the house leadership. And the Bible talks about how to appoint them. You know, it's interesting. Uh, there is really the only way to appoint them is, according to the word of God, is that the leader is supposed to choose them. It's not because somebody makes a bunch of money. It's you're to find faithful men. You're, you can see in the New Testament as Peter and Timothy, he talks about Titus, talking about how to appoint leaders and how leaders will help you inherit a land. And I believe that that's even where we're at now. So just recently, at the end of this last year, um, what we, I, I had asked uh, maybe six couples, uh, not be based on anything other than the Lord said, I want you to ask them. Just, and this kind of reminds me of where Jesus went to the wilderness, and he prayed. And the next morning after he was tempted, right, or after he'd been there 40 days and 40 nights, tempted, he comes and he, he's walking, and what does he do? He says, hey, uh, you, and hey, you, and hey, you. And in, in heaven, there's, there's gates with the names of these 12. To, how many of you know it was important for him to get those names right? So he was seeking the Lord, not just quick to move, quick to move, quick to move, but just seeking the Lord. Like, who, is, who are you saying to, to step into this place and, 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 to, and honor this, this role to help lead and to help guide to help, and, and pray for it? You know what it really is? It's serve. Like, like last time we served, we served on the night of that Van Buren Alma game. You know, like, I don't know if you know that, but Alma is 10 and 0 in conference. Tomorrow night or Tuesday night, they have a game where Alma will be at Van Buren in basketball. I love watching high school basketball because I was a player. I love to play. I, I played is what I mean by that. Um, and, and so we, on that night, I remember going, who scheduled this meeting? Who scheduled this meeting on a, it ended up being on a rescheduled night, right? Where they scheduled the, so I couldn't go to the game. I'm the pastor, like, leading this. I'm, I'm actually leading the night, and I'm thinking, ah, who scheduled this night? Well, I did. We did. But it was because it had to be rescheduled because of snow, right? Reschedule, reschedule. And so here we are giving up a night, not just we, and you're saying that's just a small thing. It's just a small example of what it looks like to serve. It's an extra night a month. It's an extra time. And it's not just a night. It's prayer. It's bringing your supply. Anyway. And so we have that. And one of these days, we'll put the, bring them before the church here uh, as in this coming little bit um, and just you know, show you who they are. Um, 
And I, I believe it's a special thing. And it's not a, it's not a pomp thing. It's just uh, faithful men who have their houses in order, lead their families well, husband of one wife, not given to drink, have their finances in order, serve well in the house of the Lord. It's a matter. And the Bible says this, that he that desires to, to do that desires a good thing. So it's good to desire that. And be patient. If the, Lord, if the Lord's plan for you, then be patient and let your name be called. But don't try, just try to jump ship to go find a ranking somewhere else. Because you're impatient. Because you know what you get then? Start over. You don't get to pass the test. So then you get to take it again. All right. Here we go. So 1 Chronicles 12, 33. Um, and, and this is talking about David, right? And David's mighty men. I think it's interesting when we think about David. Um, a man after God's own heart. We'll look at that here in a moment. But here is uh, of this name, of Zeb Ulon, uh, such as went forth to battle, expert in war, with all instruments of war, 50,000. So from that tribe, from that, that man, uh, there was 50,000, and these 50,000 could do what? They could keep rank. Did you know that that's a pretty big deal? That's a huge deal. That, 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 that was written about this tribe, that this 50,000 could keep rank. They knew who, who, how to go up the chain of command. They knew how to, they, they knew this. They, and, and they were not of a what? Double heart. Verse 38 of the same chapter, all these men of war that could, uh, that could keep rank came with a perfect heart to Hebron to make David king over all of Israel, and all the rest also of Israel were of one heart to make David king. So this is the, the strengthening of David's armies, and there was one heart, one king, and they could keep rank. This ultimately is just saying, Lord, what are you saying? Coming underneath of, and David, it's a man after God's own heart, we, we think about this, and let me just reiterate this, Jesus was subject to rank. Did you know that? That Jesus was subject to rank? Jesus didn't do just whatever he wanted. He was under the Lord's command. In 1 Corinthians 15, he tells us the same thing. He couldn't just come out of underneath what God said. But also in, all, in the Gospels, he said, I only do what I hear the Father say or I see him do. But here, uh, David, a man after God's own heart. David, a man after God's own heart. When you think about it, he was a man of war. He couldn't build the temple because why? He was a man of war. What, well, in a man of war, he was, yet he was called a man after God's own heart. You know what that means? Let me say it this way. As a man of war, he could keep rank. This is why, and let's, let's define what it means to be a man after God's own heart. Do you know what it means to be a man after God's own heart? Are you a man after God's own heart? Are you a woman after man, or God's own heart? You can be. Here, let me define it. Acts 13, 22. Removing Saul... He had made David their king. God testified concerning him. I found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He is willing to do everything I want him to do. That's what it means to be a man after God's own heart. He'll do all that I told him to do. He will do everything I want him to do. This is what it means to be a man or a woman after God's own heart. I'm going to do whatever he tells me to do. He understood rank. I'm under God's authority. He understood rank while he was a shepherd and all of his brothers are out there at the battlefield and he's over here tending sheep and this lowly shepherd's boy. He understood rank. He honored his father. He honored, he came to battle. He understood rank. He understood rank when he said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? In other words, there's one authority over all of us and we're just sitting here taking it. He understood rank. He understood rank when he cut the, 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 the piece of fabric off of Saul's robe and he just greet after he had done that. He said, I missed it. I messed up. I should not touch God's anointed. He said, if God doesn't want him there, he'll remove him. Do you believe that? So just going back to authority. If God doesn't want him there, he'll remove him. He believed that. That's what the Bible teaches. Let's keep on going here. We're talking, ultimately, we're not just talking about authority in the army of God. I'm talking about authority in 
all authority being from God, getting our house in order, we got to come under authority. Our, our prayers for, for leaders for in our communities, that you and I are grow in favor with God and man because we understand and honor authority. That's one of the statements that I believe this year. We're to grow in, in favor with God and man. You know one of the ways you and I grow in favor? You honor authority. Not just pastor, teacher, boss, co-worker. Honor authority. Coaches, you on, we honor authority. Why? Because all authority is from the Lord. House in order is this. There is a heaven's flow. And that I'm not just part of God's plan. We are part of God's plan. He is part of God's plan. And I have a, a, a duty to uphold. Thank you, Lord. So Romans chapter 13. Romans 13. We're going to close with um, <clears throat> these passages. <laughs> Let everyone be subject to government authorities. For there, Somebody underline high of this. For there is no authority except that which God established. Do I believe that? Yeah, but no, what about those tyrants? What about this? And what about that? And what about that? Well, what about, what about, what about your what about? What about your what about? Seriously, what about it? At, at what point does the word of God hold authority to you? At what point? It, okay, let everyone be subject to govern and authorities. You, do you remember Rome? This is written to the Romans. Do you know that Rome and the Romans were the most vicious, like in history of all? This is why they were able to conquer. They didn't just conquer because they had great armies, but because of the fear that their armies struck into the other, because of what they're going to do to them. They're vicious. This is written at that time. It's, it wasn't written when it was everyone was singing Kumbaya, because Jesus came. The Jews and his disciples, they thought they were looking for a savior to deliver them from some tyrant. But Jesus had nothing to say about that, but he says this here. Through Paul, he says, let everyone be subject to government authorities, for there's no authority except for that which is from God or which God established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. Consequently, whoever rebels against the authority is rebelling against what God has instituted or against me. We talked about that. Why? Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting? You're rebelling against him. And those who do so will bring punishment upon themselves. Can I tell you that a part of the reason our children don't serve the Lord oftentimes is because we don't have a Lord? What I mean by that is this, and maybe bring great clarity to that statement. No one's telling us what to do fully, unless it seems right to us. And so we teach our kids to decide what they think instead of transfer their dependence. We're to be dependents and depend on the Lord. Well, I don't need to depend on the Lord because my money tells me I can do this and I can make this plan to do this and I can go do that. And you know what? Look at them over here. They're doing fine with that. You know what? Let's just do this and we're going to go do our own thing. I'm, this, is, this message this morning and yesterday, it's not like, hey, everybody, let's get all excited and run around because, you know, men are giving to your, your account. This is called some things in order so that heaven can flow, and I come under authority so heaven's authority can be in my life, in my prayers, and flowing through me. Yes. Coming under. Coming under. The, it's like a, if you ever had a wild horse. I, 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 we had a little pony at one time and never again. They're from hell. I'm telling you, chase my cows through the fences. It was the worst thing ever, right? Ever, ever. I was, I, 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 I seriously, I thought it was a d demon in the horse. But these things are wild, wild things. But because they, because it hadn't been ridden and hadn't been broken. Have you? Are you broken? Are we? Ever, are we broken the way we're supposed to be? Are we just righteous? Do we know my sins were as scarlet? In the same passage of James, he says, you who are laughing, get some tears. You who rejoice, start mourning. Be 
be broken so that you can receive the word of God with meekness. Be broken so that the, the commander or the rider can direct you without bloodying your mouth. Am I broken? Am I, or, 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 or am I self-sustained? Am I able to just go make it happen? Or do I really recognize that my life is here and but I'm but a but a mist, but but a vapor? What do I know? Am I am I broken? Because I think, I think the way that we view authority and, and what, even what's going on and, and with what was wrong and slaves and all this kind of stuff has morphed and changed and, and, and moved us into an unhealthy place of what God has established authority here on this earth. I'm going to read two passages and I want you to let them sink in. Whoever rebels against authority is rebelling against the God who instituted those. And those who do so will bring judgment upon themselves. For rulers hold no terror for those who do right, but for those who do wrong. Do you want to be free from fear of the one in authority? Then do what is right, and you will be commended. For the one in authority is God's servant for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid, for rulers do not bear the sword for no reason. They are God's servants, agents of wrath, to bring punishment on the wrongdoer. Therefore, it is necessary to submit to the authorities, not only because of possible punishment, but also as a matter of conscience. Your conscience. You ever violate your conscience? When you violate authority, you're violating your conscience. When you violate authority, what's happened is you are able to disregard the check can I tell you, there's often times the Lord will come to you and I with a check, but because we disregarded the check here, we disregard that check there, it's that of authority. It's that of God. It's that of God. Didn't, didn't he say when you persecuted them, you persecuted me? When you disregard authority and you disregard conscience on that, who are you disregarding? We don't recognize that as that, but that's what it is. We do what we think. And I'm talking, I'm talking to myself here. I'm talking to corn in the national forest. I've never done that, except for to investigate what is deer for there. But it's illegal. But I justified it. I'm just feeding them. Who are they to tell me? Never shot a deer over corn. Thank God. Because I would have said it and I'd probably be in jail. I'm not good at keeping secrets, y'all. <laughs> at all. Talking to me. I'm talking to we. I need authority. Not only because of possible punishment, but also a matter of conscience. This is also why you pay taxes. For the authorities are God's servants who give their full time to governing. Give to everyone to what you owe them. If you owe them taxes, pay taxes. If revenue, revenue. If respect, respect. Honor to honor. Let no debt remain outstanding. I'm going to finish reading through. Now let me, let me jump to 1 Timothy chapter 2. 1 through 4. First of all then, I urge you to pray for those in authority. Pray. Urge you to pray. All right, let me read it. First of all, then, I urge that petitions, prayers, and intercessions, and thanksgiving be offered for everyone, for kings, and for all those in authority, so that we may lead tranquil and quiet lives in all godliness and dignity. This is good and pleasing in the sight of God our Savior, who wants everyone to be saved and come to the knowledge of truth. All authorities from God were to be praying for authority, and I want to close with this, this passage. Colossians 2, 22 through 23. Bond servants. We hear this word stewards. I don't know what translation it says up there. Um, it says, obey in all things, all things your master according to the flesh, not with eye service as men pleasers, but in sincerity of heart, fearing God. And whatever you do, do it heartily as unto the Lord, not unto men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of the inheritance, for you serve the Lord Christ. Did you know 
when, when we look in the word and we see servants, it's the word slave. In this day and age, and what I had men, mentioned a moment ago, because of the abuse of authority and because of slavery, which is absolutely terrible the way that, that this was instituted. Did you know in this time, slavery was very much a thing? And it, ha- it wasn't based on color of skin. It wasn't based on color of skin. It, a lot of it was based on how you were born. And you had the opportunity to serve the Lord. This is what he's saying, to serve the Lord. Because sometimes we're born into things that we wish we could have been born a different way. We wish we could have had this. We could have had that. Can I tell you that God is not unjust, but he is faithful to always bring you reward? And though you're down here on this earth with an eternal perspective, how you serve and as you serve unto the Lord, it'll change your eternal status. You have, and I have an opportunity to serve. He's talking to slaves here. Not just the color of a skin. He's talking to slaves. Serve well. And he said, if you don't view them well, you won't serve well. That's in the parable of the talents. And so, um, <clears throat> First Peter 2, 11 through 21. Beloved, I beg you as a sojourner, sojourner and pilgrim, he said, um, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against your soul. Have your conduct honorable among the Gentiles. And then they will speak against you. Uh, then when they speak against you as evildoers, that um, they may be or they may, by your good works, which are observed, glorify God in the day of your visitation. Therefore, submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether to the king supreme or to governors, as to those who are sent by him for, for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of those who do good. For this is the will of God, that by doing, by doing good, you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men, as free yet not using liberty as a cloak for vice, but as slaves or bondservants of God, honor all people, love the brotherhood, fear God, and honor the king. Servants, slaves, be submissive to your masters. I, if you were to look that up, it's, it's slaves, masters. We, 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 we read servants. And when we do that, we take away authority. We take away authority when we're just a servant. I'm not a slave. I take away the authority. You've been bought with a price. What does that sound like? You were bought. Did did you know the gospel is actually a slavery? But you have a good master. That's actually what it is. You're not your own. You've been bought with a price. You're to glorify God in your body, which is His. So when we get to heaven, it's, everyone's not just going to be running around doing whatever they want to do. They will very clearly be under authority. And because you are able to handle authority, you're able to lead more people. Be submissive to your masters with all fear. Not only to the good and the gentle, but also to the harsh. Oh, come on. But also to the harsh, for this is commendable. If because of conscience towards God, one endures grief and suffering wrongly, for what credit is it if when you are beaten, it's for your faults and you take it patiently? But when you do good and you suffer, if you take it patiently, this is commendable before God. This sounds even like martyrdom, doesn't it? You're standing for righteousness, but you're, you're willing to stand like Stephen? For to this you were called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving, leaving us an example that you should follow in his footsteps. Be submissive. I got a servant. I got a master. I've been bought with a price. Authority. If you and I want the flow of heaven in our lives, we're going to have to understand authority and where I'm out of line in my house, where I've been out of line in my conversation, where I've been disregarding coaches and teachers and anyone in authority, I need to get that in line because that's what the Lord's saying. If I get that in line, what you'll find is that even my children will come under. As for me and my house, we will serve 
we will come under the command of the Lord. I believe that's what God's wanting to do now more than ever before in this day and age. He's being very clear and concise with saying, hey, come in line. Come under authority. It's the strong place. It's the safe place. It's where heaven flows from, from you and to you, under authority. Get under authority. Get under authority. If you're in this house and you're not a part of and you're not coming underneath where God has set you, I'll just say it this way. Come under authority. This is not about trying to be like, oh, I'm your pastor. I'm talking about receiving what God designed you to have and to hold in this day and in this hour. And even to say that, even to say that as as a man standing up here in this office, okay, as a pastor, that is, a, that is a only by obedience to say. It's only by obedience to even to suppose that you would say or to stand or to communicate that. It's only because of under authority. That's it. And as you do and you receive the word of God as, as it is him speaking to you and your expectation for God to move in your life, he brings you a word and you can agree with that. Father, you said this, you set me here, you, according to Jeremiah 3.15, you said you'd give me pastors according to your heart who would lead and feed me wisdom and understanding. Oh, thank you, Father, that my house is built by wisdom because you're giving me words straight from you, straight from you, not from a man, but from him. And when you make that demand, even when you make that demand, what comes out of these lips is completely different. I'm not even just talking about how you hear it. I'm talking about uh, an anointing to flow. An anointing to pour out what God is instead of a resisting way. You ever been there with your, maybe it was with a kid, and you're trying to explain something to but they're resisting, and you're like, you can't even communicate the way you would could have been so simple. Hey, guys, come on. But now we're having to... And we were just supposed to go over here so we could enjoy this. Man, let's do that. Amen? Why don't we stand this morning? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let's just close our eyes this morning. We're going to thank Him for authority. It's all from Him. His plans are good for us. You got to believe that or you can't receive. You'll resist. You'll resist his word, not when you don't know it's for your good. Father, this morning we just say thank you. Thank you for authority. Just tell him, thank you for authority. All of your authority. Lord, all those that you've placed me under. Lord, those that you've placed me over. Lord, teach me to serve. Teach me to submit where I need to submit and to to lay myself down. Both places is me laying myself down. Lord, show us how to serve as unto you. Lord, we just come under the authority of your word this morning, every word that you've spoken, every word that you've said to us. And we purpose in our hearts to be a doer of your word, not a hearer only, to make the adjustments that we need to make so that heaven can flow in our lives. Lord, we thank you that as we come under your authority, just as, just as Cornelius came under and was under authority, he understood authority, that heaven, heaven's flow was open to him. Thank you for your heaven's flow being open to these people. Father, in their finances, in their, in their health, all, all through. Father, just coming into agreement with you, just a strength that you have the right to command me. You can also command all the other things. And so we thank you for it. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. If you're here today, the, this is the word of authority that is this, that there is no man, no name on earth which men can be saved except for the name of Jesus Christ. No other name. Not just in earth, in heaven or earth that man can be saved, and that's Jesus. If you don't know where you'd spend eternity, if your life was required of you today, you got to give your life to Christ, I want you to lift your hand right now, right where you're at. Just be bold. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want you to lift your hand. Thank you, Lord. Is there anybody here? I'm going to wait just one more time. Anybody here at all? 
So this is a, a, tra- a different change here. And, and I, I, rather than asking you, I'm going to now commission you. It's your turn to do the asking. It's your turn to do the asking. The reality is when we come into this house of the Lord, the majority of the house should be saved. Where people don't know Christ is out the, beyond these four walls. So now I'm commissioning you. If you know Christ and he is your Savior and he's your Lord, here's what I'm asking you. Will you Is there anyone here that will ask somebody, I want to ask you for a show of hands, is there anyone here who knows the Lord and will do what the Lord has commissioned them to do and to go into all the world and preach the gospel and ask someone else if they know Christ this next week? Is there anyone here, by a show of hands, was there anyone here that will ask somebody this week of where they will spend eternity? By the show of your hands, a lot of... Be strong about your hand, not bashful, because I'm going to ask you next Sunday. Because you know what we're going to see? We're going to see salvations. Because right here we have an army. Father, in the name of Jesus, as our hands lifted high to you, we just ask you to direct our steps this week. To show love. To encounter those you've prepared. Father, to be a waterer, to be a planter, to reap a harvest. Lord, I thank you for that understanding that one plants, one waters, you bring the increase, but we're just obedient. We'll go and carry the message of your son Jesus for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. I'm looking forward to testimonies and goodness. We're gonna go beyond these four walls with the message of Christ right here preaching Jesus, everyone, everywhere, and tomorrow, and the next day, and the next day. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you guys Wednesday night at the Valentine's in Alma. Text if you haven't yet. Respond. 551-5111. Valentine's.